Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today we're doing our special weekly version of epilepsy and how to defeat epilepsy. And today we have our special guest. She is the founder of Defeating Epilepsy Organization. And this is Natalie Boehm. And we're going to talk about this week about stress. Since the holidays are coming up, we were discussing that, you know, during, during, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah, all the holidays are coming up. You know, people go through a lot of stress trying to prepare and get ready for the holidays. And people with epilepsy sometimes can trigger their own seizures from the levels of stress they endure. So Natalie, why don't we start with, you know, talking about, you know, your input about what you think, you know, people can do to help themselves, you know, avoid triggering a seizure when, you know, with all the stress coming up with the holidays. Well, I think it's very important to um, have a realistic schedule and realize, you know, if you're going to have family, friends over, if, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. One of the worst things I did in the past was I felt I had to do everything and then I'd burn myself out. Luckily, stress doesn't trigger my seizures, but I get very sick from it. I get real bad inflammation. And once I'm done, I'm done for the day. So I, I tell people with epilepsy, you know, follow a, a regimen on a regular basis when it comes to things like eating well, making sure you're getting plenty of rest, doing and some level of exercise to make sure you're well. But as you're getting ready to have, you know, special times with your loved ones, don't be afraid to say, you know what, as we're getting dinner ready, can you help me with this? Or I'm working on dinner. Can you just quickly tidy up before we get everybody over here? You know, that was one of my biggest things in the beginning when I struggled with epilepsy, um, trying to cope with epilepsy. I hated to ask people for help. I felt like, you know, that I was being a, um, an inconvenience to them. I, you know, I also had my pride. I didn't want people to think, oh, I, I can't do it because I have epilepsy. I didn't want them to look at me differently. But then as the time went on and, and years went on, I, you know, when I finally got my regimen intact and I you know, started working on controlling my seizures and improving my lifestyle, I realized that it's okay to ask for help. That, you know, we're, you know, it, people, people uh, want to help other people, you know, and, you know, all you need to do is ask your loved ones and your friends would be more than willing to, you know, accept your help. And they also, you know, if they can't do it, they're going to tell you that they're unable to do it. But if they say they can do it, you know, um, don't be embarrassed to ask and, and don't be embarrassed to accept their help. You know, it, it could, you know, really play a role on your level of stress and, and help improve your, your epilepsy as well. And I like the point that you brought up about, you know, eating well and, and, and staying healthy. And, and you brought up about bloating also, because I think sometimes when we are really stressed out in the times of the holidays, we tend to focus on everybody else but ourselves. And nutrition can play a big part on the level of energy we have on how well we can focus. And we should really think about the foods that we're eating and try to get the best nutrition as possible in our bodies so we could actually have the energy and the ability to focus and do things, you know, better than we normally would, you know, on other times of the year. Oh, absolutely. And I admit, I'm even guilty of falling back into bad habits at certain times of the year. Like right now, we just got past Halloween. I can't tell you how many days I'd be so busy instead of yeah. stopping myself and making myself something healthy to eat. It's like, well, I'll just grab a couple of pieces of candy that at least give me a boost until I have time. I didn't right. find time. And then I had to tell myself, stop it. You're not doing the right thing. So, I mean, we're all human and we're all guilty of um, slipping it at times. But I found really what had to um, help me was in this past couple of years after I got real sick with um, COVID complications, it mm -hmm. really was an eye opener where in the past I took everything on when it came personally, I wanted to make sure my family had everything they need and it didn't matter. I didn't think of myself. It was always my husband and the kids came first. And even when it came to, you know, my career, there were so many things I didn't want to let go of where oh I know how I want it done can someone do it at the same level yeah. and then here I am burnt out and sick and I finally had to tell myself you know what you have a team for a reason you right. have a family for a reason it's all right to say you know what 
I can't do this right now. Can you help me at least get it going, get things started? And that way I can pick up from there. And it really, once you find the uh, comfort ground, once you can do that, it's such a great feeling. It no longer is I'm weak or I shouldn't have to ask anybody. I'm embarrassed to ask. It's I'm human. And yeah. I have good days and bad days. And if I'm having a bad day and something still needs to get done, it's okay to at least ask. And if someone can't do it, you know what? Then it doesn't get done that day. Exactly. There's always tomorrow. And I think that was my biggest thing too, is that I, I burnt myself out so many times and I, I am definitely, uh, uh, you know, a victim of that as well. Like I, you know, so many times I wanted to get everything done and I didn't want to stop until I got it done, but I ended up burning myself out. And, you know, I even ended up causing myself seizures in the past because I just pushed myself too far. And, you know, a lot of times we don't realize, but our body gives us signals too. If you get a headache or a migraine, or you start, you're starting to feel uncomfortable and, you know, and you're not focusing and you feel foggy or even bloating, you know, your body has inflammation. You know, these are all signs. Your body's trying to give you signals saying, wait a second, you're pushing me too far. I need some relaxation. I need some rest. You know, I can't do yeah. anymore. And sometimes I, I think the biggest thing is we don't listen to our bodies and our bodies are very smart, you know, and we don't give our body enough of credit, but our body gives us signals all the time. And sometimes we have to pay more attention to the signals that our body's given us. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I'm very guilty of that. There's plenty of days I've sat here feeling chronic fatigue and just say, no, you can't rest. You got to get so much done on your list. No, you can't right. rest. You got to make sure that you're going to be meeting with people. And I didn't realize, you know, when I was doing things like that and stressing myself out, how I looked to other people when I would be in meetings, I could see non-verbally, like they looked at me like, are you okay? And I thought, yeah. I'm okay. Let's just get on with things. Yeah. And one of my, um, intern she's been helping me since the beginning of uh, launching our foundation and a couple weeks ago I just said you know can we meet next week it's just been a rough day for me right. and I felt bad canceling on her and then when I met with her the next week the first thing she said she's like Natalie I'm so proud of you for admitting that you had a bad day and you okay. just needed some space she goes I've been waiting to hear that for a long time and she goes, you know, you can see you're growing. And it felt wonderful to hear that because I felt, I meant I felt a lot of guilt not having the strength to meet with her. Yeah. But it also felt good to realize, you know what, maybe I have been beating myself up too much. Right. And, if, you know, if I'm going to be an advocate for people with epilepsy, I have to lead by example. And I can't, exactly. I can't say, oh, I can get it done. I can do it all. You know, watch how I'm doing it because. I know that I'm very lucky despite having epilepsy. I know I'm very lucky. I'm one of the ones who have been able to get their seizures controlled. Yeah. There, there are plenty of people who still have it mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they need, especially our support for if they're having a bad day to say, you know what, I need a break for yeah. people to take them seriously. Right. Because we all were, at least in my experience, I've seen anyone who's battling epilepsy, we're all unique in our own our own ways. I yeah. haven't met anyone yet who their seizures were exactly the same, their mm -hmm. auras were exactly the same, or the right the med combination of medications solve the problems. That's what's so complex about epilepsy. Yeah. We're our own case and there's no um I guess you could say guideline or regimen that doctors can go, oh, this is happening. So this is what's going to absolutely work. Right. And that's, that's the uh, challenging journey for both doctors and patients, which causes a lot of stress and exhaustion. Yeah. And I, I think sleep is also an important factor too. You know, so many people don't realize, but, you know, not getting enough of sleep can cause our seizures as well. And a lot of times, you know, especially during the holidays where we're trying to get so many things done we don't, you know, sometimes we stay up later or we don't take breaks, you know, in the middle of the day, if you're home, you know, and you feel tired, it's okay to take a nap, you know, a, a, a 30 minute, 45 minute nap can make all the difference in the world. Oh, we can. Absolutely. And I mean, I've gotten to the point now where if I feel tired, I get my cell phone out and I'll, t I'll put the alarm on for one hour. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't fall asleep, even if I just lay there and close my eyes or... Yes. I take my computer out and 
watch one of my favorite shows, watch one of the reruns I love just to relax myself and be right. happy. Even a little thing like that, just taking a little break like that can make the difference in the world. Oh, 100%. And I like meditation too. I think, yes. you know, I, I think meditation can be really beneficial for people. How do you feel about ben um, meditation? I think it's great. I really do. And the nice thing is, is you could do it in any time of the day. Yeah. I mean, there's times when if I'm having a bad day, let's say I'm having brain fog mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work on something at, the, at my desk, I'll sit back for just 20 minutes and close my eyes and block everything out and just allow the, the tension in my body to go away. And right. once I feel better, I open my eyes and I get back to what I need to do. So, I mean, that's the nice thing is I think a lot of people, when they think of meditation, oh, I have to be sitting on the yoga mat. And, you know, they think of those, you know, things that people, when they market certain things. Yeah. And it's like, no, you could be anywhere. You could be on your couch. You could be at a desk. Exactly. You could be anywhere. And if you're like, you know what? Even if it's for a simple five minutes, like, okay, I need a timeout. My brain needs a timeout. My body needs a timeout. Yeah. And just close your eyes and do what you can to either totally clear your mind or if there's things that, you know, bring you happiness, think about those and just let yourself de-stress and, and then go from there. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even realize, like you said, you could be sitting on the couch or you could be sitting in your chair and you could just be doing breathing exercises. And that's a form of meditation. You could close your yeah. eyes. You can clear your mind, you know, think of something that's positive and just go in through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth and just do it very slowly and just relax and just think of something that's very positive, you know, and slowly just, con you know, feel in contact with your own body and start to, you know, you, you actually can start feeling things inside you. And it's a, it's a very unique oh, yeah. feeling. You kind of learn about your more about your inner self, you know, by doing that. And then when you open your eyes, you, you kind of feel refreshed. You do feel unfocked and yes. you do feel a lot more relaxed. You know, you don't, well, my, my favorite time to meditate I love working out first mm -hmm. and then I love sitting down for a good 20 minutes and just meditating, putting on my favorite music. Yeah. And I just find, you know, that right there, I can think of what I've done to make my body feel better. I listen to my favorite songs brings me happiness. And yeah. I just tell myself, you know, each day, you know, I, I take life one day at a time. And it's like, if I'm having a good day, I pat myself on the back going, you reached your goals. Awesome. Right. If it's a rough day, then I say, you know what? At least try your best. But if you can't give 100% today, it's okay if you can't give 100% today. Yeah. And I'll be the first to admit, it took me years to be <laughs> able to say to myself, yeah. it's okay not to be okay. And that's why with um my supporters and followers, I've put a couple of posts up there about I've promoted more and more about um self-love and you know overall yeah. wellness and everything saying you know it's okay not to be okay there's yeah. no shame in that there is no shame and no guilt either you know yeah. I, I realized it took me years just like you and my husband would get really upset with me at times too because I just didn't want to quit. I didn't want to stop. I knew my limitations, but I wasn't listening to myself. It's like, you know, I, I preach it. I understood it, but I wasn't being, like we said before, the mentor I should be. And I got to a yeah. point where I, you know what, if I'm going to give advice to people and I'm going to control my seizures and do well, I need to start applying what I teach. And that's what I started exactly. doing. Exactly. You know, and I had to realize that by the end of the day, if I didn't get it done, well, you know what? You didn't get all the food, you know, that you wanted for maybe Thanksgiving. You'll go out tomorrow and get the rest of the things, you know, exactly. or, you know, or if you didn't put up all the ornaments on the tree for Christmas, you'll do it the next day. You know, it's, it's, you, you just do as much as you can and little by little, everything will get done. And they even have like for, for meditation and yoga, they even have yoga poses where it's specifically, they're just stretches and they're specifically done to relax you and you feel a sense of relaxation. And you can look those up on YouTube. You just look up uh, relaxation yoga poses and a whole list of different um, yoga uh, certified um, professionals uh, will come up on the list and they'll show you simple 
easy yoga poses because you don't have to be like you said a yoga guru you don't have to stand on top of your head easy stretches yeah. could relax the body so well and i think for all of us there's different things depending where we hold our stress you know certain stretches we can do to make us feel better i tend to hold a lot of stress in my shoulders mm -hmm. but i also um and I didn't realize it for the longest time, like around my hips. And I think part oh, really? of it was um, for years I did martial arts and I really didn't stretch certain areas as much as I mm, should have. Yeah. So I found um, doing a lot of the lower body yoga exercises such as um, pigeon pose and just mm -hmm. even just stretching out certain stretches where you can um, focus on things like the IT bands or yeah. the glute muscles. Yeah. It really helps not just to bring pressure off the hips, but I found my posture improve, like my lower back and everything, because everything, we don't realize that everything connects and the simplest decisions we make about taking care of our body yeah. can have such an impact on our health. I oh, learned most definitely. Years ago, my both my children have hemophilia, mm -hmm. and we went to um, an event in Children's Hospital, and one of the hematologists and physical therapists, they put together uh, a thing on shoes, and mm -hmm. they were talking about depending on, you know, your age and everything, when you should wear things like high tops or things right. like um, the lower flat, and they, they said what people don't realize is so many people focus more on fashion than yes. the well-being of their feet. Yeah. And they go, it can start with something as simple as it misaligns your ankle because you're not getting mm -hmm. the right support. That travels to your knee. Once yes. your knee's out of alignment, it heads for the hip. And before yes. you know it, that's how people's gates get off and puts them at high risk for fall because not having the right balance and the right support slowly just works its way up the body and over time. It's trying to adjust to what this um, these shoes or anything we're doing causes the imbalance. And yeah. long term, we um, end up hurting ourselves. Yeah. So you wouldn't think something as simple as what you put your, you know, on your feet in the morning when you go out and about would make such a difference. But it really does long term. Everything we do has a consequence. Yeah. And I, I know so many people that cared more about fashion, even like if you remember the, the pointy shoes, the high heel shoes, you know, so many oh, people yeah. I knew got bunions from those high heel shoes because they squash their feet in. And like you said, everything's connected. And when your body starts hurting and your body is off balance, again, that's a signal from your body and saying, you're not doing something right. Something is wrong and I need help, you know, and that's the same thing with epilepsy. I would always get signals around my eyes and my head and I would sometimes get headaches and migraines and I knew right then I was overdoing it and I had to close my eyes oh, and yeah. make sure that I closed my eyes and relaxed, you know, and, um, you know, these are things that people have to realize. I think we made up some really good points, you know, and, you know, first of all, we have yeah. to realize that, you know, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And, you know, that people don't have to get everything done. One, two, three baby steps and everything will get done, you know, absolutely asking for help, you know, eating the right foods, you know, don't try to don't try to eat a lot of sugar and stuff like you were mentioning, you know, you would eat for the candy bars, but some people just they gorge on sugar foods all day long. And then they have those sugar crashes, just like caffeine crashes. And it's not good for the body. Yeah you know, and, you know, no, well, it's not. Yeah. And... Because I think we talked about it one time we were talking about nutrition and brain fog. Yeah. And one thing I learned over the years, cause I do a lot of, um, maybe like every four months I do a good cleanse or mm -hmm. I go for colonic hydrotherapy yeah. to make sure that, um, I'm not having to build up a bad bacteria right? because a lot of people don't realize, um, the bacteria we have at the lining of our intestines, our colon, mm -hmm. play a role in brain fog. So yes. if you have a buildup of bad bacteria, that can be a contributor to brain fog. And yes. one of the worst things about um, sugars, especially artificial sweeteners like aspartame yes. or circulosis splenda, mm -hmm. the bad bacteria love to feed on them. Yeah. And then that's why people actually get addicted to sugar. I found for the longest time, after I had my, um, well, when I was pregnant with Eddie, 
one of the cravings I got was the chai tea from Starbucks. Yes. And I didn't mm-hmm. realize as I was doing that, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just taking care of a craving. So I'm not driving yeah. myself nuts all day. I, that's what was starting to happen with my, my gut lining. Yeah. And then I realized it's like, oh, I need my fix. I need to go to Starbucks. And I'm thinking, why am I always having the craving to go to Starbucks? You're getting it addicted was, to the sugar. Exactly. And it took going through quite a bit of... um colonic hydrotherapy, cleansing, changing my diet. And it took a time, just like it took time to get addicted to the sugar. It yeah. took a lot of time to get away from that. And I mean, it was really, um, it was a challenging effort. I made up my mind though. I had to, for my, you know, my own well being, that I had to stop that habit. Yeah. But, you know, we're a society that we're always on the go even with people battling chronic illness like epilepsy, our our society has become such a doggy dog environment in some yeah, situations that that's how we develop those bad habits. I got to get a quick cup of coffee before I do this. I need a little bit of this just to keep going. Yeah. And we don't, you know, we're in this survival mode, not realizing as we're in my way, it's almost like a, a smaller version of fight or flight. It's I got to keep going. I got to keep going. If I don't move now, you know, something, you know, I'm not going to survive with something. Yeah. This is when we pick these horrible habits up and really hurt ourselves. Yeah. I cut out the sugar. I, I'm probably like 90, 95% sugar-free. I, I cut out of my diet. Oh, that's was, awesome. It was like an addiction. Like, you know, just like a heroin addict trying to get off of um, heroin it's hard to get off of sugar when, you know, but eventually I did it. And also, you know, stress could be brought on, like you said, for an imbalance of bad bacteria. And, you know, when you, it was funny, cause you were talking about it. I was drinking this, which is carrot juice with, um, with, uh, different, um, greens and reds and, uh, probiotics and oh, prebiotics nice. in it. And I actually, I use biome and it's in on my website because I, st- I, I went to one of their seminars and I was so intrigued by the way they make it and everything is so natural. And it was made by scientists, not just someone slapping a label on it. And oh, I nice. noticed a huge difference in my, my, the way I think my memory, um, my stress level, everything, you know, just my GI tract in general, everything started to get a lot better. And it's, you know, and, and cleansing your, your body and making sure that you have the right, um, you know, good, you know, balance of good bacteria versus bad bacteria is so important. People don't even realize it. And that's where a lot of the illnesses and a lot of the symptoms of stress play in is when you do have an imbalance in your, in your gut, you know, and, you know, things like that should be really, people should really learn a little bit more. And also a doctor named Dr. Gundry, um, he has uh, excellent books on the market and he has also products on the market and he's very good, big about the leaky gut syndrome. And he talks about foods that we think are healthy, but are actually bad for us. And he, he discusses it in his books. And, you know, these are things that, you know, people need to look at as well. But with the holidays coming up, I think people just need to realize, like we mentioned, all these different aspects and, you know, and we're not worrying so much about getting it done. It will get done. And as long as you are willing to open up and ask for help, if you need help, you know, everything will get done and, you know, and make maybe a list of things of what you need to get done. And then if you don't think you can get these things done, like you said, don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, and make a, make an organized list of short-term goals and long-term goals. And, you know, and eventually by the time the holidays come, everything will get done. And if you ask people, well, maybe you could bring, you know, the salad or, you know, I'll do the the turkey. Maybe you could do the ham, you know, and, you know, exactly. And then, you know, things, you know, make things easy upon yourself. You know, you don't have to hold the whole weight on your shoulders, you know, it's okay to ask for help, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, and I even learned an experience with my parents because my mother and father, we had, um, my father had a, a couple companies and we had a number of clients who became like family to us and they would come every Thanksgiving and Christmas to celebrate with us. And I just saw how stressed my mother got wanting the food to be perfect, the house to be perfect. Everything had to be at a certain level and I realized it just got to the point where 
my mother really was enjoying enjoying the holidays. Yeah. She was happy to be with all of us. She was happy to be there. But that time, the time she was done, she was so drained and just looked so miserable. Yeah. You know, it's not worth it. I mean, you don't it. have to have make it into a five star event at the no. end of the day. You know, if you have your loved ones there and you're having a great day, you're feeling in good health that day. Mm -hmm. You you've done the best you can. Exactly. That's, some, that's something to celebrate. Not did I have every single type of food out? Did I use this brand of things or, you yes. know, playing, trying to keep up with the Joneses? That's what I saw exactly. my mother do so yes. much because she wanted my father's clients to have a special, you know, and I understood, feel welcome and know we appreciated them. But yeah. by the end of the day, it just wasn't worth seeing how sick she looked yeah. over it. And they exactly. always did appreciate it. So I think even if there were a couple of things she wouldn't have been able to do, they I don't see them. Cared. They wouldn't have cared. Exactly. Yeah. And I see that so much. I think everybody doesn't realize that it's your family and friends who come over and they don't care if everything is perfect as in our head, we want everything to be perfect. And there's so many of my family members also, uh, I saw that, you know, they didn't enjoy the holidays because they were so worried about making everything so perfect. And by the end of the day, they were so drained that they were the ones, they did a great party, but they were the ones who didn't enjoy it. And they were exactly is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to get yourself so drained and then you don't even get to enjoy it? The holidays is gone. You know, where's the benefit, you know? So, you know, I think friends and family just want to be together, you know, and I think that's really the main thing. I don't really think they care if everything is perfect or not. I really don't, you know, and I think that's what people have to realize too, you know, and not so worry about what other people think. It's what you think, you know, if you're happy, you know, and you're happy with the way you did things. And like you said, you gave it your best shot. That's all that matters. Exactly. It really is. So I think these are really good pointers to, you know, discuss with people. I hope everybody got some really good ideas on how to handle stress during the holidays. You know, stress is something that everybody is affected by, but especially with people with epilepsy, we have to be extra careful and not push ourselves to the limit. And especially around the time of holidays and wrapping and gifts given and, you know, preparing food and all the other good stuff, you know, don't overdo it, you know, break things up, take things day by day, make sure that you're taking care of yourself and take some time out to maybe exercise, do meditation or do some yoga and make sure you're taking care of yourself. Number one, you know, it, you know, the first priority is you. And that's what a lot of people forget, but you, you are the first priority because if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to end up having seizures and then you can't be, uh, you know, helpful to anybody else and you're harming your own self and causing problems for yourself. So, you know, take these little bits of advice that Natalie and I have put together for you. And, you know, if you have any other advice, contact us and give us some, you know, pointers so we can mention it in our descriptions and, you know, and maybe even create some articles about it to help other people. So we're always willing to hear everybody's, you know, um, point of view and ideas. That way we could all be one big community and help each other get through, you know, living with epilepsy, but in a positive, productive and, you know, way of uh, handling it and also live a happy life because epilepsy, just because you have epilepsy, life doesn't end. We still can live a happy, healthy and productive life. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, everybody, and I wish you all the best. And Natalie and I will see you next week. And if there's any topics you want us to cover, shoot us an email and mention them, and we'll be more than happy to try to appease you. All right, everybody, have a great day. Have a great week, everyone.